Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm Allie and this is Allie G Reads and this is the final stretch of my bookshelf tour. Yay! We are in my bedroom. I have this shelf here behind me, um, which is mainly like my favorite books ever. Um, I have a couple of like new books in front of me. I have some on the bedside table here that I pulled out. Um, and then I have like a small shelf on my, um, wall there. So there's a couple different shelves to go through. Uh, but yes, this is my favorite shelf. Honestly. Um, I do have my album pictures of tell from Ramstein up here um, as well as some of his books I'll go through I have my little um, Nike Nike angel um, this is a new addition to my shelf and I think it's so beautiful it's like the one in the Louvre so I have that nice little thing I've got my dog nesting dolls I have my book outlet bear uh, plants I've got my gizmo love my gizmo uh, my little nerd plant pot my mother bought and he is so freaking cute I can't handle how cute he is um, this is a lot of cute stuff on this show uh, buddy of course uh, I have my rabbit I have more owls um, my wood lamb that I bought because I had to because why not um, so there's a lot of really cute things <laughs> on this shelf. I really like cute things, um, especially in my room. It makes it feel more homey. Um, yeah, I just, I love it. It makes me feel more me basically. <laughs> um, I'll start with the ones that aren't behind me. I have the, uh, satanic verses from Salman Rushdie. I haven't read it yet, but it is on my, uh, list. I'm hoping to get to this before the end of the year. The Imperial Wife by Irina Rain. Um, this is two women's lives collide when a priceless Russian artifact comes to light. Sounds interesting. It was on sale at Book Outlet, so it's got Russia history in it. So I'm here for this. A heavy book, The Fountainhead by Ayn Rand, uh, Ayn Rand, whatever, Ayn Rand. Um, this is like so many conservatives love Ayn Rand, I know, whatever the fuck her name is. Um, I don't know if it's this one or Atlas Shrugged that is more on that conservative reading list, but uh, I'm curious just to know what the hype is, but honestly, it looks super dense and I don't think I'm going to like it one bit, but I still want to give it a try. The Good Son by Yu Zhang Zhang. Uh, this is a Korean mystery. Um, I'm really excited for this and I'm hoping to get to it this month, actually. The Historian by Elizabeth Kostova. This is apparently like um, a historical fiction about a family that is like talks about Dracula and Vlad the Impaler. So I love the concept of this story. Um, it's on my reading list. I tried this author before and it was a little too dense for my liking. So hopefully because of the subject matter of this one, it moves a bit quicker. The Cutting Season by Attica Locke. Um, I did put this on my reading plans of the year. So I, I still hope to get to this. Confessions of an Economic Hitman. I believe this was actually in one of my other videos, but I brought it into my room because I think I'm going to do a reread. The Professor and the Madman, a tale of murder, insanity, and the making of the Oxford English Dictionary by Simon Winchester. Um, I think this might have been in one of my other shelves, but I moved it in here um, because I do want to get to it. So, The Telling Room. I know I've talked about this before. It's been on my TBR forever. It's so dusty. Oh my god. Um, a Tale of Love, Betrayal, Revenge, and the World's Greatest Piece of Cheese by Michael Praternetti. Um, I just haven't got to it yet. My favorite nonfiction books ever, one of my favorite memoirs ever, uh, this is Van Gogh, The Life. Um, I did talk about this in my nonfiction rec video. Ooh. I have Einstein, The Life, His Life and Universe by Walter Isaacson. Um, Walter Isaacson apparently writes excellent biographies, so 
I got this at Book Outlet and I did not want to pass up getting it. So I have not read it yet, but Sleeping with the Enemy, uh, Coco Chanel's Secret War. I talked about this in a previous video. This is Chanel had missing timelines in her biography and she was uh, basically with a Nazi. So curious to read about that one. Uh, I read this this year. This is the last Leonardo, The Secret Lives of the World's Most Expensive Painting by Ben Lewis. Um, more and more keep coming out about this painting. So I'm not going to say too much more about it, but if you are interested in what the hell is going on with the Salvador Mundi, this is a good one. It just drags a bit in some parts. Um, Sue Monk Kid, The Book of Longings. This is apparently a, a fiction book about, a historical fiction, about, um, the wife of Jesus Christ. So curious to read it. I got it used and I can't wait to pick it up. I think it's going to be like an end of the year book though to be honest master thieves uh the boston gangsters who pulled off the world's greatest art heist this is about the gardner museum heist um super into art and art history so i'm really curious to see what uh the hype on this one's all about my dog chewed the fuck out of the spine not happy about but yeah it'll go in a true crime video a really excellent um biography on Tesla, the inventor of the electrical age, uh, W. Bernard Carlson. Um, I love that the spine is his face looking off the shelf. It looks super, it looks amazing on the shelf. Um, I really did enjoy this and Tesla is such an interesting figure and, um, I'm really glad that we are now paying more attention. There's, there's dust all over. I'm glad we're paying more attention to him now as an inventor and the contributions he made and he was unfortunately robbed of one of my favorite books ever um, on tyranny 20 lessons from the 20th century by timothy snyder uh, this is a tiny little book i recommended this in a nonfiction. it's um, basically how society is the only way to prevent tyranny from taking over and how to recognize the signs of tyranny it's a good read Lying by Sam Harris. Uh, this is um, a book on lying and why we lie. Uh, Sam Harris also did Free Will. I talked about this in one of my nonfiction uh, rec videos and do we really have free will? Uh, both are super interesting books, honestly, and they're both really small. I love that Sam Harris packs so much information into such a small book. It's one of my favorite science books. Some history books here. Agent Zigzag, The True Story of Nazi Espionage, Love and Betrayal by Ben McIntyre. Um, this is about a con man spy. Um, haven't got to it yet. And Double Cross, also by Ben McIntyre, The True Story of the D-Day Spies. This is a super interesting story, but I haven't read it from Ben's perspective. So I do want to get to these as well. Some Eric Larson books here I have in the Garden of Beasts, uh, Love, Terror, and the American Family in Hitler's Berlin, and I have Dead Wake, The Last Crossing of the Lusitania. Um, I put these on my to be read this year, so I still want to get to these. Uh, Shortest History of Germany from Julius Caesar to Angela Merkel, a retelling of our times. This is like 2,000 years into 200 pages. Um, it was interesting little jump start into German history. I wrapped it up recently. And then I have some Bill Bryson books here. I have The Mother Tongue, uh, English and How It Got That Way. Um, notes from a Small Island. And A Short History of Nearly Everything. I got these all used and I have not read them yet, but I will. Bang from the top down. Um, I do have some like some of my prized books on this top shelf um and some of them are these four stephen king paperbacks um i have this really old version of different seasons which is one of my favorite of his collections um i also have this copy of the eyes of the dragon which is like a king fantasy book which is actually really good i feel like i'm putting dust in my eyes coffee um, I love this cover of Night Shift. It's the first cover of Night Shift ever. It's so amazing. I 
love this cover. Oh my God. And then of course I finally got my hands on the original cover of Pet Cemetery. It's my favorite book and, um, so happy. It took me so long and someone was finally selling it and I jumped all over it to get this original cover, um, in the mass market. I'm just so happy I have it. It's such a great cover. I have a t-shirt with it too. I have, um, Till Lindemann from Ramstein. I have his three published books here. Um, uh, 100 poems. Um, I'm working my way through this right now. Probably be done by the end of the year. I just kind of read a poem here and there and then. Um, the poems. This is Messer and Instilineshtin. Um, this is two poetry collections in one. I have read through this. So, and then, uh, the one by his father, I wrapped up recently too. Uh, this is by Werner Lindemann. Werner, sorry. Mike Oldfield in, uh, Shakustal in the rocking chair. So this I wrapped up recently as well. Actually, I'm impressed by all of them. There's some poems that I'm like, eh, but there's also some poems that eventually became songs on the new album. So bonus shadow of the gods. I just wrapped up in my, um, July wrap up. So I'm not going to say too much about it. This hefty fucker, uh, the priory of the orange tree. Haven't read it yet. The maidens by Alex Michaelides just wrapped it up recently. I have the two Stuart Turton books, uh, The Seven Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle and The Devil in the Dark Water. I read this recently, loved it, um, and I plan to read this this month in August. Arguably, I think my favorite author, and these are the only two books he has so far, uh, I'm Thinking of Ending Things and Foe by Ian Reid. Foe is super underrated, but everybody's read and Thinking of Ending Things. Such a great mystery thriller. Hurricane Season by Fernanda Meltra, one of my all-time favorite books, and I think one of the nicest looking covers I own, uh, The Master Margarita by Mikhail Bulgakov. I've talked about it a hundred times. The Library at Mount Char, uh, also hoping to read in August. Picture of Dorian Gray, Don Quixote, The Count of Monte Cristo. Uh, this is like one of my white whale books. It's so fucking hefty, but apparently it's the... OG revenge story, so I, I have to read it, but it's so hefty. I'm so intimidated. <laughs> Oxford classics here. I have Faust part one by Goethe, and then I have Great Expectations by Charles Dickens. Two French translated books here. I have The Collection by Nina Legere, which I wrapped up a couple months ago, um, and I have The Revolt by Clara Dupont Menod. Uh, have not got to this yet. And I have this. Um, erotic fiction trilogy, but I think it's supposed to be a series. Uh, this is the Hades and Persephone one that I really loved so far. A Touch of Darkness is the first one. A Touch of Rune is the second one. And A Touch of Malice is the third. I thought it was going to be the last. Apparently it's not. Disclaimer by Renee Knight. Psychological thriller. Haven't got to yet. Car Sick by John Waters. Uh, I wrapped this up in the beginning of the year in January. Nothing to See Here by Kevin Wilson, one of my favorite books of last year. It's hilarious. Everybody should read it. Uh, 100 Years of Solitude, a classic I have not got to yet. Silence of Bonaventure Arrow by Rita Legansky. This was um, one of my favorite books this year so far. Uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful historical fiction and so underrated. The Water's Edge by Sarah Gruen. She wrote uh, Water for Elephants. Um, this is about the Loch Ness Monster, though. So, Book of Evidence by John Van Vanville. John Banville. Uh, haven't read it yet. The Silence of the Girls by Pat Barker. This is a feminist Greek retelling. One of my favorite memoirs ever. John Cleese. So anyway, John Cleese is uh, one of the founders of Monty Python and he is hilarious and this was such a great book and I have a Monty Python book sleeve. I'm a huge fan. So, <laughs> so good. Remainder um, by Tom McCarthy. This is like a novel equivalent of Schenectady in New York. The Coming Insurrection by The Invisible Committee. I just wrapped this up. Another one of my favorite memoirs ever, uh, I must say, by Martin Short. Uh, my life is a humble comedy legend. I am from Hamilton, Ontario. Martin Short is from Hamilton, Ontario. He's an excellent comedian. He's hilarious and he's one of the best people. So. 
hometown hero. Have to have it. Drive Your Plow Over the Bones of the Dead by Olga Tokrusik. I'm sorry, I'm mispronouncing that. This is translated from Polish, I believe. Ask Again Yes uh, by Mary Beth Keen. I actually won this in a giveaway, so I haven't read it yet. It's not something I would normally pick up. It's like a family drama thing, but I'll get it to it eventually. The Bear and the Nightingale by Catherine Arden. This is the first in a trilogy. It's like Russian fairy tale. I haven't got to it yet. Devotion of Suspect X. I just wrapped this up. Excellent Miss um, Imaginary Friend by Stephen Chbosky. This is one of my all-time favorite books, um, and it was on my best of 2020. These Wicked Villain books here uh, by Katie Robert, Desperate Measures, Learn My Lesson, and A Worthy Opponent. These are like Disney villain erotica. Best Evil Child book ever, The Bad Seed. Daddy by Emma Klein. These are short stories. I have not read these yet. Uh, in my best of 2020, uh, The Pisces by Melissa Broder. It's a really interesting, weird story, but it's so good and amazing cover. I have two German translated books I have not got to yet, but I put them on my like uh, reading list for the year already. Uh, Kesebier Takes Berlin by Gabrielle Trugit and Berlin Alexander Plotz by Alfred Doblin. One of my all-time favorite books and one of the most horrifying books I've ever read, uh, Docile uh, by K.M. Spara. I can't say enough good things about how great this book is. Sweet Bitter by Stephanie Danler. This is like a really good, interesting, like a disaster woman millennial fiction type book. If you've worked in a restaurant or a bar, Three Hours by Rosamund Lupton. I haven't read it yet. Strange Bodies by Marcel Thoreau. I put this on like my plans for books I'm going to read this year. So I'm still planning on getting to this, but I think this might be like a Halloween read. Violet by Scott Thomas, also probably a Halloween read. Atomic Love by Jenny Fields, historical fiction. Uh, the Russian Pink by Matthew Hart. I have not read this yet, sadly. And then I have this weird kind of it's called The Novel Cure, an A to Z of literary remedies. So basically this is like, if you're ever in a mood, um, <laughs> you can find a book for each mood. That's basically what this is. It's like you look up a mood or an emotion you're feeling and they recommend a novel for that in here. I have some like crappy, uh, flimsy versions of these Shakespeare stories. They're actually both my favorite stories. I have a Macbeth and a Hamlet. I hate the height of this book. Uh, but I wanted to get like a really shitty cheap version so that I could like write on it and write in it and muck up the book. So those are that. Sticking with my Shakespeare books, um, I have this. I got this at Barnes and Noble in the States. It's William Shakespeare Complete Plays. So it is every one of the plays. I have King Lear, Macbeth, Hamlet, Romeo and Juliet, A Midsummer's Night Dreams, Othello, Merchant of Venice, and more. It's great to have. I'm a big Shakespeare fan, by the way. Really, this is probably one of my prized possessions I own. Um, this is a really cool, uh, I found this at like a, it's a complete works of Shakespeare. It's like a leather bound book. It has the most beautiful like art in this book um the book is in excellent condition surprisingly and um I paid $80 for this and this is now worth a couple hundred um it's like a British press book it's stunning this is like definitely one of my prized possessions and I I just I love it so much it's amazing comes in this like box yeah it's got gold pages it's so beautiful <laughs> a little cheat guide uh Shakespeare quotations you can look up kind of like if you're looking for a quote on something you can just look it up in this like reference guide I have these three tiny used um Shakespeare books here that I got for a dollar 99 uh I have a Macbeth I have a Romeo and Juliet, and I have a Henry the Fourth, part two. Uh, the Art of Seduction and the 
48 Laws of Power. I talked about this on one of my other shelf tours, but I moved it near. Uh, and I am working my way through The Art of Seduction, and it's fucked so far. So there's that. Bell Bellwether Revivals uh, by Benjamin Wood. This is one of my favorite books ever. Um, it, this is a super weird, interesting dark academia before dark academia was like a big thing. Gentlemen and Players by Joanne Harris. Uh, I'm trying to make my way through this book and it's it's slow to get into but apparently it's worth it in the end so and a different class is in the same school I believe these are probably also both dark academia before dark academia was a thing Dune still haven't read it another one of my all-time favorite books filth by Irvine Welsh this is such a bizarre book but uh, it's really amazing gritty dirty bizarre <laughs> I have two by Chloe Benjamin. I have The Immortalists and I have Anatomy of Dreams. I talked about these in other videos. Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. An analyzed review is coming of this. I've tabbed off everything I want to talk about and I hate it. Uh, Frankenstein, which is one of my all-time favorite books ever and one of my all-time favorite movies, the old black and white Boris Karloff version. Um, this right here is, I love this version too. It's like a soft, like kind of velvet book. This is an amazing book. It's not even horror necessarily. Like, it's good, but it's... The social commentary is just still stands. I have both Susanna Clark books here. I'm pretty sure it's all she's ever published. I have Paranesi. I'm trying to get through it. It's hard, but apparently once it goes, it goes. And uh, Jonathan Strange and M. Norrell. I do want to read this in the fall. This feels like a fall book, but hefty bitch. And then I have um, Den of Vipers. Um, this is like an erotic fiction about a reverse harem. And apparently it's very controversial. I bought it because it's controversial. <laughs> I plan to read it this month. Um, and The Girls Are Also Nice Here by Laurie Elizabeth Flynn. I talked about this in another video. And then my Elizabeth Taylor books. I have Furious Love. Um, Elizabeth Taylor, Richard Burton, and the Marriage of the Century, and I have Accidental Feminist, um, how Elizabeth Taylor raised her consciousness, and we were too distracted by her beauty to notice. I also have a pink Bible. And yes, I've read it. Um, interesting reading material, let's just say that. Some, like, new books that I... I have here that I'm still reading. Um, the Body Keeps Score, uh, Brain, Mind, Body, and the Healing of Trauma. Um, I am currently working my way through this. I'm hoping to be done by August, but if not, like I just read a couple. It's very heavy reading, so um, I'll finish it when I finish it. Witches by Nigel Cawthorn, uh, A History of Persecution. I'm also working my way through this. This will probably be done in August. Uh, this just talks about um, the persecution of witches throughout the world and throughout history. It's super interesting. Local Woman Missing by Mary Kubica. Uh, I'm probably going to fly through this tonight. And Hood Feminism. Uh, notes from the Women That a Movement Forgot by Mickey Kendall. I've been looking really forward to reading this one. So I'm hoping to also do this this month. And that's it. Yeah, so that's the end of the bookshelf tour. That's all the books I have. Uh, thank you so much for joining. Thank you so much for checking this out. Um, thank you for subscribing and please like, comment, and subscribe. And stay tuned for more. I'm honestly most excited for my like October plans. Like I love spooky season. It's just a side note. I love spooky season and I am ready to do like my October series like now, but um, yeah. So again, thank you so much for checking this out and I don't have an exit. <laughs>